The all-new Volvo XC40, this new compact or rather small SUV. Today in our full review on how to go fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. A detailed look on the exterior here in the R design today, the sporty variant, the interior and of course the driving experience today with the T5 petrol engine. Everything you need to know about this car, I can promise you, this will be the best review of this car, as always on Auto Fuel. Let's go in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! This car is not a real sibling to the XC90 or XC60. Those ones are siblings. This one here sits on a new so-called CMA architecture and it's basically smaller and also the other new small Volvos will follow on this architecture. In the front you have the Thor's Hammer LED light but only if you pick the LED light package seen from the base version or if you have the R design pack which we have here today on our test vehicle then the LED Thor's Hammer light is included. Also this front grille then in the R design has this black glossy dot structure so it looks a little bit stronger and also stronger with the contrast here in the lower part of course even more contrasting to the white exterior color we have. 4 meters 42 or 14 foot 5 the total length so yes this is way shorter than the XC60 for example which is for a compact SUV really long and this one here more attacks in this surging smaller SUV segment. 17 inch it starts with the rims then 18 inch with momentum or R design trim this one the optional 19 inch 20 would be the maximum. Well, the general perspective, in the R design you also get this contrasting roof here in black, also black frames around the mirror, um, um, the, around the windows, the mirror caps here also in black. And what we can see in general from the design is that we have a big gap right here for the design. Then this crossover look with the black plastic in the lower part. Some small details like this rubber Swedish flag. I wonder how long this will last. Hmm, I hope very long. And in the rear, this characteristic design feature, raising line here from the window and technically in the opposite direction, again another design line right there. So it has some, let's say, squarish elements here. And an R design badge here in our variant for today. What do you think about the design? So the side profile is really unique for this vehicle. In the rear it pretty much looks like the bigger brothers of the brand, especially here with those vertical drawn taillights. Then we have the T5 logo for the engine and an R design logo right here. Then the crossover look with the plastic look in the lower part and da, 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 fake exhaust tips alert. This one here all fake, the real ones smaller inside. We've just been discussing that quite a lot of times and um, some don't care but some think this is really a no-go. What do you think? So you can open the trunk here with the side of the car key or way down below that. It's pretty low and the car was all clean but in the rear this white color always gets dirty pretty quickly. Then a very well usable luggage area. Also interesting that below you can put some more stuff and also a nice solution for that one here because you can put it up like this and maybe if you want to have something standing upright that could help or even behind that. So you have you know some um, this is here another hanger for example for a bag also possible 
And then around the corner, there are two buttons where I can let the seats flip like this. Really nice and see all flat. Hey, that's my new, <laughs> new indicator here. Uh, ski hatch would also be possible. Top tether at the rear, isofix in the front. So I think also considered thing in the size, A plus for the luggage area. And here you can see a little bit of luggage inside that you have a better understanding of how big the cargo area is. And let's see the child safety test. Yeah, it's, it's not really that sensitive, but I think, you know, you will be hurt a little bit, but at least it works so that it jumps back again. Let's get inside and pretty solid door handles. Also good closing sound. Then inside of the doors, it's a new concept, really interesting. Here also with orange contrast color in with felt. So that's a rather, you know, let's say rough fabric material, but I think it's something different. Some don't like it, some do like it. What about you? Then also this interesting, it's a soft material, soft plastic. Um, it also has a structure, so overall it's really worthy, so it looks like high quality. Then we got this dot design, you cannot really feel them, but it's just more visual part. Memory seat function here also for electric seats, press M, then the one, then you have it saved. The Harman Kallon sound system, by the way, is quite nice, but not comparable to the one we have in the bigger Volvo cars. They have more speakers and the sound system has its orchestra sound, we do not have it here. Then the first look at the interior. The base model would come with fabric seats as well, these in Germany. Then in the higher trims, the only um, solution to avoid animal skin fully is this R design seat. This is a little bit sportier, stronger in the shoulder part. You can also lengthen it manually in the, in the lower part. And this one then has microfiber on the inside. My information goes so far that this velour on the inside is not from animal origin, but some parts of the outside. They always mix it around, no one really knows, it's hard to get the real information of that. Then, steering wheel, our design, and I can also get it inside with the shoe tab. And it's really comfortable with a high seating position, so it feels like a full-grown SUV already, although it's not that long. So it's not this you know, crossover style that you sit very low and have some SUV design elements. It already has a real SUV seating position and I would also expect that of an SUV. The seats in general, as we know from Volvo, very comfortable. Um, you can con control it in, in all the ways. Let's see, let me start it. Yeah, there it is. Got the electric control now, front and back. Also the back part of the seats. It's really easy con to control in the lower part here. Electric lumbar support. Here's a set, it's a manual for the um, for the lengthenment of the leg area in the front. The steering wheel is it looks a little bit asymmetrical, it looks a little bit weird, but I'm really glad what they did. First of all, this new airbag cover looks more premium. And here the the buttons here, it they feel better. It's not this glossy black anymore, like with the bigger models, XC60, XC90, also the um, V90, for example, S90. This is a matte black now. So you only have the glossy black around the infotainment system. Everything else is in matte black, and I really like that. You can adjust the steering wheel, but be careful. Uh, the mechanism below is really strong. Maybe you also heard that. So you can put it like this. This works really smoothly, but again, pay attention when releasing this lever uh, down to the steering wheel. The first time I did it, I really hurt my hand because it's so strongly attached. And it just use your one thumb below that and then just pull downwards. Then, well, you see how, how much strength um, is behind it. So please pay attention not to squish your fingers right there. And digital instruments, all digital. Uh, we already know them from other Volvo models. It's nice because you can have the GPS in the middle part then and the um, other instruments right and left. Starting the engine now, you can see it. Um, it's not that fast, a digital speedometer, analog one is more accurate, I would say. But this one here gives you a little bit more flexibility. 
interior overview. I think it's really interesting that it also mirrors the exterior design with those squircle. You know, the square and circle is a squircle. <laughs> this squircle dimensions here. Then again, this dot design, especially here, um, also reflects the front grille. Soft touch also for the top dashboard. I think a great build quality. Sometimes I have even the impression it's a better build quality than one of the um, more bigger and more ex uh, more expensive models. Really astonishing. The R design steering wheel here again with the perforated sides. R design logo the lower part. Again, matte here, matte black also around the uh, only buttons we can see here. I think it's also good because the glossy black always collects so much fingerprints, like here. Fingerprint collector, well, my fingers are usually pretty dry, so I don't, I don't leave so many fingerprints. Uh, good for crime scenes, you know. <laughs> but then again, I think the matte black is really better. It looks somehow um, a little bit worthier, a little bit cooler. Uh, for sure. A big middle console also. We'll soon take a detailed look at that. They have paid attention to offer you more storage spaces of all. Nine inch screen. You get that standard uh, air conditioning and Bluetooth is also standard. Here you can already see I also have the uh, cable connection with the Alpha CarPlay. Soon a more detailed feature to this infotainment screen. And um, well the glove box is very sm small, all stuffed full already right there. So with every Volvo now, there comes this uh, <laughs> this tissue and it has the symbol 2SEC and that means hold it 2SEC with the button right here. And then this is the cleaning mode and there's microfiber on the inside and then you can clean it around. And you will have to do that quite often, at least if you want to uh, you know, have it in a proper look. Here the Apple CarPlay to the home screen, um, but you can also theoretically connect to a Bluetooth still. Um, this is the main menu. Then you can always access the top part for some settings. Scrolling left, this is for example if you want to um, access the camera. If I turn on the car, it will also be available. There it is, camera system with a great resolution. This fake drone view from above. And I can also switch to certain cameras, for example here to the front. Again, great resolution or also um, automatically to the back camera when I put in um, the reverse gear. There it is. So I think a very great solution they found here. I could also do an attack on Michel now when he's sitting here. <laughs> we can test that. Ah, it still does flip the, uh, rear, the rear head restraints. Although we have quite often criticized, it should not be doing that when someone is sitting on the seat in the rear. There should be a sensor for that but they haven't solved that yet. And on the right side, you can go to the uh, settings for the sound system, for example. So, well, you have to learn this system a little bit, but after a while you get along with it and you can also very well use it. Then also the GPS, as last showing you, see right here, you can make it a little bit bigger around Bavaria today, and then you can also scroll in and out. So overall, I think we are satisfied with the infotainment system. Also in this vertical view, you can see better on the map. Um, again, you should watch Autogefühl to know that you can access like this, for example, for the camera and stuff. Um, if you know some of the secrets there, then it's fine. The temperature can be accessed in the lower area, also for the seat heating. Um, you know, you don't have a separate knob and you can control like this or press it here or plus plus minus. For a screen solution it's quite easily done mm, but then I think I'm a little bit old school when I say I like to have knobs when driving. When you're standing still it's no problem here but when driving it's quite often handy to control it with a knob as well. So this lower area is actually quite spacious. You have the QI symbol here. This is for inductive charging. You can optionally have that if you have a phone which is suitable for that. Other than that, you have um, two USB slots. I can, for example, put a USB stick here or the cable, then also for the smartphone mirroring function. And you can put a couple of smartphones in the front there. Also here, it would be possible to put it right in there. Then the cup holders are adaptive. Nice solution also with this dot design on the rubber pad on the inside. The shifting lever for the automatic gearbox is really short. You just do it like this, pretty easy solution, electric handbrake. Then there's a small um, storage space right there. Or then the armrest. 
here. Well, this is an interesting solution, for example, for tissues. Um, a little bit squeezed in there. But then you can also remove this whole part. So this is possible. I'm going to put this one out and you can see the full scale. And, well, I think this vehicle really offers some flexible solutions already here in the front. Let's get in the rear compartment. I'm really looking forward to that. And I've left the seat as I would be driving. It's a tall driver, 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. And wow, and this isn't really way different in the XC60, for example. Also, headroom wise, there's enough room still left, although we already have the panoramic roof mounted here. So, this new architecture seems to offer a lot of room, especially for the rear passengers. And you have a upright seating position so it's very comfortable here for four adults no problem it's also allowed with a fifth person here um, of course you have somewhat the middle tunnel here um, but it's still quite soft in the middle um, I have enough room so it is basically set up for four adults but you can also travel short dis distances with five adults also nice that you have the, um, the microfiber here on the inside on the rear seat with the R design too then we have the middle armrests, also here with adaptive cup holders. And in the lower part here, I'm not sure why I've just put a normal USB plug, but this is USB-C, this uh, port here. So you also need the according cable for that if you want to use it. And last but not least, very interesting, you can also flip the seats from here. And then as soon as I access it here, you see that the head restraint here also flips down. That's what's happening when you also press it in the front infotainment system. And you can see it again how it folds flat. And from here you can also, for example, open the ski hatch if you like. And you have to open the like this and then open the armrest and then you can reach through here. Yes. <laughs> here. <laughs> well, they have done it that they have the cover right here for this um, middle head restraints you can then fold up like this also interesting solution so again also for the rear compartment here i think they've done a very good job and it proves once more that this seems to be from a lot of aspect the best price performance of volvo So what do we have here is a two liter four cylinder, 250 horsepower approximately and all we drive T5. There's also the T3 available. That one will be then be a three cylinder, 1.5 liter with about 160 horsepower, front wheel drive and also manual transmission. This one here, automatic transmission. And last but not least, there's also a two liter four cylinder diesel available with 190 horsepower. Well, interesting so far, Volvo has reduced themselves to those two liter four cylinder engines. But now with this vehicle here, as it's a smaller car, also a new entry level three cylinder engine. So um, this one here is the rather known common engine. And we're also looking forward to a later stage to test the new small engine. So welcome to the driving part. Let's first take a look at the acceleration and we do some, let's say 30 to 80 or something and just hammer it. But we're going to the dynamic mode to have the maximum output. Let's see and go. There it is. Wow. That is some performance. Even sounds quite nice, engine wise, very sporty. And Indeed, the XC40 being the smallest SUV yet from Volvo feels somewhat sportier also in the dynamic handling. Also the R design version we're having here is a little bit uh, stiffer than and well feels really good. It's also fun to drive. I think that's um, the biggest difference. The XC60 and XC90 are very comfortable to drive. This one here too. But this one here clearly more fun to drive than the bigger counterparts. As for the driving modes, well, dynamic mode turns up the gears higher, shifts down earlier again. Here when going up the hill, that's pretty useful. At the same time, you can always just use the shifting pedals here at the steering wheel. It sounds really quite sporty indeed. And also, you know, we're getting pulled and pushed at the same time because when you apply so much throttle, also the 
rear wheels are spinning with you in the T5 petrol engine. Driving modes, usually you take just comfort, then car gets calmer, shifts up a gear. You just use that in your everyday driving. Or you can also use the Eco mode. And that one is basically comparable with the Comfort mode. It's just that the throttle input is reduced a little bit and also the coasting or sailing function is enhanced. So um, when you're driving uphill, it doesn't really matter. But um, as soon as you're going a little bit downhill or if you're not applying so much throttle, then the car will soon show you that. We go into this mode where it's just running freely, not consuming any fuel. And that, of course, saves you fuel on the long term run. So now above the peak of the hill, now I'm letting go of throttle and it also says you're coasting ready in the instruments. And when you're below that, it's basically working. As soon as I go to the throttle again, it goes above that threshold. Again, the Volvo engines still consume too much fuel. That's usually always the case. Um, I'll also tell you soon more on the, on the motorway, but um, depending on how you drive, it's, you know, eight is an absolute minimum, but more realistic is more about nine liters and one kilometers an hour. Uh, sorry, oh, eight, <laughs> nine liters on 100 kilometers. If you want to know what's an a, uh, MPG, nine liters slash 100 km in MPG, or maybe even above that if you drive in the city primarily. I think the main uh, or key finding here on countryside roads is it's really fun and agile to drive, so that works with this new smaller architecture. And at the same time, you don't lose too much comfort, at least here in the front for, for driver and co-driver. So that might be a reason even, you know, maybe even to, to step down a segment as one other important thing is, of course, you don't have so much car around you and that also reduces stress. Um, here at the moment it's not such a big factor, but when you're in narrow cities then you get along with this car easier because it's just smaller, you know. You can find better parking spots than with the XC60 or XC90 and, uh, and so on. And now some off-road riding for you in the snow. We also have the off-road driving mode that activates, for example, the hill descent control and um, also you know, changes some characteristics with the all-way drive, more transport to the back wheels and stuff. And so we can, for example, also test this slide uphill and we just stand still and see how the car handles that here on snow and ice then. And so yeah, it's some wheel spin. But then the all-wheel drive distributed to the right wheels where we have traction and we easily get up the hill. First, we have the ESC activated. See, here for example, also the hill descent control sets in. I also have a small symbol there. I'm not, not braking. Hill descent control is active. Automatically goes down the hill for me. So that's really helpful then when off-road driving to give you even more control so that the car do that stuff. So and then we can also drive a little faster on a small handling parkour. The off-road mode only available at really low speeds and even if I apply a little bit too much throttle, the ESC, electronic stability control, really keeps me in the lane. So um, it's not so much you can do wrong besides just driving too fast, you know, when the uh, laws of physics <laughs> just apply. So the car really gives me a very safe feeling and it's just really a little bit like driving on rails. And um, I mean, even if I want to exceed the perimeter a little bit, let's try that and see what the car does. For example here, getting too much on the throttle. That was a very slippery point now. That's, you know, where physics end, so you have to be aware of that. In our next corner. So the off-road mode already draws back the stability control a little bit. 
that you have some more wheel spin than this one is possible. So because sometimes when you're driving off-road, you need a little wheel spin. Um, what is interesting, so you see when I'm driving too fast, the car changes back to the normal comfort mode. Now when I want to induce a drift, the car, see here, did you hear that? <clears throat> the brake was really applied a lot. So um, this car in normal mode, you cannot really drift it. Then there's the ESC Sport mode, which can be accessed when you, you know, from the menu menu, turn it a little bit to the left side. And the ESC Sport mode then gives me a little bit more room to play around with the vehicle. So that's more fun, but of course at the same time, in a way, unsafer. So also not recommended to use it on uh, you know, real road surfaces. So if I want to use the drifter now here, see I can do a little bit more, um, but it is somewhat limited still. So um, it's still just the ESC Sport mode, and I mean this car is also not meant to uh, be drifted around in a way like this. Here we can play a little bit. It's also a lot of fun, and there again the effect plays a role that this car has a short wheelbase, and it's general really fun to drive and it's the same for this small snowpack who are right here but again also in EC sport mode I mean it's a mainly front wheel driven car also some power to the rear wheels then of course with the all wheel drive we have here in the T5 but the focus is still on remaining control of the vehicle but again surely always with a lot of fun here in the snow yeah I mean I really force the issue now, then I can turn the car around, but really have to work that. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed this part here too. And now to some motorway driving with the all-new XC40 2.0-liter four-cylinder with 250 horsepower and all-way drive. So front plus rear is the all-way drive setup we have here. Of course, there's also just the front-wheel drive version as a base model with manual hand drive here today with the automatic transmission with the higher engine. So, and uh, you know, when cruising on the motorway, what is really interesting? Well. We have the adaptive cruise control with the um, optional. You can also get the so-called pilot assist. That is this semi-autonomous function. So it's not meant to lift your hands off the steering wheel, but you can theoretically do it. I mean, just for testing purposes. Again, it's not meant to. Um, it somewhat keeps you in the lane, but you're still responsible here when it sees the lines left and right. It's working, you see it's really keeping the lane, but it's more really to, to help you. Um, I've done that with the XC60 um, in slower speed traffic, then you could, for example, do it. I mean, if you're rolling with about 15 kilometers an hour, um, that's okay then, you know. Um, but otherwise, after a few seconds, the car is also warning you, please keep your hands at the seat, which is actually also correct. So this pilot assist works up to a speed of 130 kilometers an hour the ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, also further. However, you've maybe recently also read some articles about Tesla and the Volvo ACC system that it works to keep the distance to moving objects, but not to, to objects that are standing still, which is rather the task of the autonomous emergency brake at lower speeds, which is also standard equipment in this one. So the AEB, Autonomous emergency brake, that one is standard equipment. The ACC and also the pilot assist, that is optional. So I'm also having the um, GPS info in, in the center display, that is quite helpful. So um, even if I don't see the GPS in the middle here, in the big one, I can still see it in my cockpit. And also I don't have to you know, move my eyes that uh, far away from it. So it's actually quite helpful. The car is indeed silent, so um, 
especially you know, as SUVs are standing more against the wind, this is really doing a great job. So I think I don't have to raise my voice at all and you know, driving about 100 kilometers an hour at the moment. So that's really well done like that. Also saying there's cruise control now again here. Um, you can switch it around if you want just the adaptive cruise control or the pilot assist because sometimes it can also be a little bit annoying. Um, so from time to time I just put the um, normal ACC. I would put the pilot assist indeed just in traffic situations. The steering is by the way very light. Um, but it's you know, reducing the strength you need to apply, especially when parking in and out. The car is really agile to handle at lower speeds in the basement garage and stuff. That's uh, super easy and probably the Volvo that is best to handle as for those everyday driving situations. Here on you know, the higher speeds, when I'm doing some slalom here at 100 kilometers an hour, the car is still somewhat stable. Um, it doesn't have the super sporty ride, but since most of the other Volvo models are even more set on a rather comfortable, unsporty ride, which is not bad, just different target group, this one here, that's also what they aim for, feels a little bit sportier. Also because it's you know, just shorter and sits on this very new platform. Overall, pretty convincing ride and also comfort-wise, when you drive also a longer time, um, you know, we have, as I explained to you earlier, those R design sport seats here today. They do a pretty good job in the long term comfort, so I'm satisfied with it. We expect that from Volvo seats, traditionally, they are usually very well done. Besides, you know, the abundance use of leather they still have in their program. Um, but from a seat form, really superb. So it's not the case that you have less comfort in an XC40 than in the XC60, for example, in the front. Um, so you can also save money, just go for this one. This is also a little bit more modern car. And uh, unless you really need the room in the back with the XC60 or XC90 even. So what about consumption? Because, you know, the minimum consumption here, cruise control, um, just setting it to a certain speed, not so many speed changes. So uh, what has been applied there? Um, let's see, there it is, yeah. So at the moment it says about nine liters on one kilometers. We'll keep you up to date if that's uh, changing um, a lot. By the way, here the GPS commands, I like it usually when the GPS command comes and then I just turn down the volume and then you, you also don't hear anything about it anymore. That's not the case here. You can turn it down, then at the moment it shuts, but the next voice command is always at the minimum sound volume. You have to deactivate it completely over the, um, over the GPS uh, menu here, that it's possible. Actually, well, it is actually, it says mute. That's strange. Well, let's see, I un it says mute here. So, although mute, obviously the car seems to uh, define mute as not <laughs> completely uh, gone, but just on a little sound level. That's pretty annoying from the system, I have to say. And I think in the last Volvos it worked when you put mute, that it's actually mute, and it says here mute. I don't know. Um, by the way, also this, um, you maybe have seen the red warning triangle in the front of the digital cockpit. That one is warning the front hood would be open, which is not the case, but the sensor is somehow malfunctional uh, when closing the hood. Um, so it says it would be open, but it's not. This can sometimes happen when, um, you know, around those areas where the hood is closed, too much grease has been applied that the electronic contacts are blocked by this grease. So they have to be uh, cleaned then. If such a thing happens to you, um, ask your dealer uh, the next, next workshop for that. That should actually help. Yeah, now when getting a little slower in the city, the car handles really exceptionally well. The steering, as I said, is really light again, um, so you don't have the most natural feeling, but it is still somewhat direct, so not too loose. Um, overall, if you like rather soft steerings, I still want to somewhat a sporty control without applying too much pressure, that's also perfectly fine. So, um, you know, from, from all the driving aspects so far, this is, this is really convincing, and again, it is, for a small SUV, a very expensive bargain. But then again, if you compare the other Volvo models, they're even more expensive. 
And now to our conclusion for today, Volvo XC40. First of all, talking about prices, this one here starts, German reference price, 30,000 euros. And then when you put the R design package and also the bigger engine, about 50,000. That's of course very expensive for a rather small SUV. Then again, with the new three cylinder engine, and if you rather pick a low trim, you can really score a good deal for a premium SUV when you keep it low. But then again, with a lot of extras really exceeding the prices. So my advice as usual is, don't go for the highest spec version if you want a better price performance deal. In general, the exterior is somewhat fresh for sure. It's a little bit different than the other recent Volvo designs. In the front, pretty similar, but this, especially the side profile is different. And I think, why not? Also in the interior, we find new solutions. And I already have to say that the interior here is more pleasing to me than one of the bigger, more expensive models. Really nice, some nice solutions. Um, of course, we need also more alternatives to animal skin here, especially in the higher trims, since Volvo especially wants to be a very sustainable brand. Then driving-wise, also surprisingly dynamic, that the car is small, has a smaller wheelbase, also really helping. It is a lot of fun to drive. To me, the biggest difference to the bigger SUVs, with this one, you do have more driving fun. So you just can ask yourself, do you need the more of room you have in, uh, in, in the back of the back seats and also in the trunk with the bigger SUV models. Other than that, the comfort is also very well given here. One of the key Volvo features that you also, especially in the front, have a lot of driving comfort, although you have a little sportier approach. And of course, as always, a lot of driving safety systems already included for the Volvo. That is also one of the key elements. Overall, I think it's probably especially if you don't pick the highest spec. I think the best price performance of Volvo there is at the moment from the new models now. Or what do you think? Join us in the discussion and also stay tuned on Autogefuel. Join us next time. Thank you so much for tuning in.